Uh, keep responding, keep scoring. What stood out to you about the late game execution for you guys? Yeah, just guys made plays. Yeah, that, that's the biggest thing is just uh, whoever it was, a lot of them were, the, whether it was up front, you know, blocking and straining or Luke, um, you know, the receivers, just, there was just a lot of plays to be made. And, um, and those guys just, uh, they kind of just really rose up to the occasion and, and, and played really well in the, in the critical moments of the game. I saw that Pat had asked you for that play call for the overtime. Is that unusual or typical? Do players come to you one asking for certain or advocating for certain calls? Oh, yeah, we talk about stuff all the time, I think, especially with mature players. You know, Luke, I ask Luke a lot during timeouts, you know, this or this, you know, give him options to get a feel of what he likes. Because we have, a, you know, a lot of different plays that we like at different occasions, but sometimes that's what they feel and like. We try to vet that going into the game, but sometimes during the game, the feel and the flow of the game is different. So whether it be Luke or Pat or Zakari or, you know, some of the guys that are more established, I like to kind of give them some some feedback and input. We I think I don't remember actually exactly how that went went down, but I, I knew what I was going to call uh, the first play of overtime. And I think Pat came over and was thinking the same thing, and so we were kind of already on the same page. And that just kind of gave me more conviction that that was the right call in that moment uh, when the players ask for things and it and it's vetted and it's good and it's appropriate for the moment. Then I think those are always good opportunities. Coach, what has Justin Step uh, meant to the to the program and and it seems like a, showed some depth this week with a lot of different wide receivers make, making plays. Yeah, I think we had eight different guys catch a ball during the game. Uh, obviously, it wasn't just the, the wide receivers, but uh, you know, we had backs and tight ends catch a ball and impact the game. That's always a good, you know, you have a good day typically when seven or eight guys touch the ball. Uh, that usually means it's, the day's gone fairly well for you, and that's what happened uh, for us, you know, in particular on Saturday. So we, got a, we feel good about a lot of the guys in, on our offensive skill to be able to catch the ball and make plays. And, that shows up, but with, with uh, Justin in particular, you know, uh, obviously the familiarity I had with Justin uh, ahead of time um, feels weird to me saying Justin because we just call him Step, but so I was making sure I got his first name right. Just a joke, I know his first name, but anyway, you know, like. Uh, He's a twin. Yeah, he does have a twin. I know Josh as well. I called Josh on accident one time thinking I was talking to Justin, but that's a different story as well. But um, just, just uh, Step has just brought a lot of. A passion for the position, passion for his players, and uh, you know he's been a he's been a great asset for for us as a as a staff and in our offensive room. And uh, he's super high energy. It's fun to watch him on the sidelines react to game the plays on the game on the video after on Sundays when we watch it. His he's he's playing it almost like he's out there with them. You know he's just got a lot of passion and energy for the position. I think that's infectious for that room. Um, and uh, you know we've got a mature room. Uh, and an interesting room because we have those guys that are so much older, but then the younger guys, you know, are very mature in the way they carry themselves. You know, like Hank and Colin in particular are very mature players and the way they go about their business and they prepare and practice. Malik has grown in, in that leaps and bounds. Um, and so uh, he's just been really good for us in the room and the receivers play well on Saturday. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, the offense in general uh, did as well. And, uh, but we're thrilled to have Step with us, and he's been a great asset for us. What did you see from Josh, especially without Caden? And what do you kind of make about what you have there moving forward for however long Caden is Yeah, it was good to have – Josh had a great day. He, did, he ran the ball well, and I thought our line, you know, um, played played well uh, in, in the run game and, and, and protected uh, well, too. And, and so, obviously, you can't have a guy – you know, we didn't – I don't know what the actual yardage is for the, the running backs, but – I know Josh in particular and uh, had, had some really good moments and really good vision. And, you know, he's kind of, we've kind of played in his strings a lot, in a lot of ways. And, uh, but did a good job out of the backfield, made two really nice plays receiving for us. And, but I was just super pleased with Josh and how he took advantage of his moment. We talk about that a lot. You know, he's not been uh, maybe as primary uh, for the first five weeks as he was the other day. And obviously with Caden being out, uh, he stepped up to the plate and took advantage of that opportunity. And that's what you want guys to see. Luke ran the ball pretty well at times. Do you think that's something we could see going forward him scrambling for yards and being, you know, sometimes a running for quarterback? Well, the scrambling part's hard for me to predict, you know, honestly, because those are things that you don't know that are going to happen. Happen, But yeah, I mean, if you're in a passing situations and the guys, you know, there's pressure or there's, you know, guy's not covered. I mean, he's going to naturally transition to some degree as a scrambler. That's not what we, we don't want to feature him as a runner, but he's certainly more than capable of that. And there was, I think, three or four design runs there the other day in critical moments that he executed very well and uh, very confident in his ability to pull the ball. He does a really good job of reading the perimeters when it's time to pull them. 
Uh, so it's certainly something that I think helped stimulate our running game the other day in a nice way and is a good compliment to what we're trying to get done. To that end, Barry, it seemed like the week in the past both said, we feel like we've played that defense for three years, you know, or however long we've been here. Was there a level of comfort in practice that, you know, this is the defense we've been going against since August 1st? Yeah, I think, I think you saw that with our whole offense and um, the way that, you know, obviously from a practice standpoint and just repetition over the course of time, our guys are familiar with what they were seeing. Right. And, um, and I, didn't think, I didn't think last year we took advantage of that. Um, and, and I thought this year we were much more in tune with that. I think even starting with me and the plan and what we did and how we went about doing it, I thought we, uh, sometimes when you're so close to things, sometimes you don't see them as well, you know? And looking back on the plan two years ago, that's kind of how it felt. Like, you know, I, I, I felt like I knew that scheme so well that maybe I pressed and tried to do some things that shouldn't have done. And we just kind of scaled that back and just said, look, let's, let's, here over the course of time, here's the things that have been good you know, for us. And, um, and, and we injected a bunch of new things too, uh, as well. But the bottom line are the guys executed, you know, like we executed at a really high level. We weren't perfect. We had moments where we could execute it much better. And, and obviously, you know, uh, the turnover that we allowed, uh, was a huge change in the momentum of the game. Uh, we left some touchdowns on the, on the, you know, on the board, um, that, that turned into field goals, you know, a couple of our drives that better execution and, taking better opportunity moments could have prevented those from being field goals. Um, but I do think the familiarity in the long term did, did help us on Perfect. Saturday. What just stood out to you about Luke's performance? Um, you know, first half executing the offense, but second half just making plays. Yeah, I, I thought, uh, you know, I don't, I don't pay much attention to the statistical part of the thing during the game, you know, uh, and then after the game to see how he affected the game, just, um, you know, in the rushing yards and pulling the pulling the ball and scrambling and you know just everything we you know everything we did kind of went through him and he really to a large degree kind of just took over the game and uh, that um, just in hindsight in those moments I mean I'm I'm watching the film on Sunday and I'm like dang that was third and seventeen I mean I know the down a distance you know during the game but like looking back on the header on the film you know in the video it's like it's third and seventeen to end the game and you know that play made to Hank like difference in the game, you know, I mean, just those things, if that ball's incomplete, you know, it's fourth and 17, are we kicking a field goal there? Or are we, you know, having a desperation, trying to get a 17 yard gain? And so I just thought, I just thought he was in fully control of the game. It wasn't perfect, obviously, he knows that, we know that, everybody can see that. I mean, we gotta, we can't, can't put the ball on the ground, you know, we gotta expedite getting rid of the ball at times. Uh, that's, um, but just from top to bottom, I thought the way it bounced back after that turnover was huge. Um, you know, it's a mis you know, it's a costly mistake, and uh, there's a lot that goes into that. But I got to help him with the play call. But um, I thought just it was a you know a, a start to finish performance of of really good football by him, and uh, it was it was fun to watch. With Brandon and Zai both getting snaps right guard, is that like a set timeshare, or is it more right the hot hand? What's the approach? Yeah, yeah, I don't know if we're ready to commit to that, you know, one way or another yet, but just felt like Brandon was somebody that we wanted to explore, given more opportunity to with what he had been doing up to this point. Got his first start, thought he handled it very well. I was really impressed with Zai and the way he came off uh, the bench and the way he played. I thought he really took advantage of those. I think he played three series at guard, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but Brandon got his feet wet and had his ups and downs like you would expect a first time starter to, be, to do. Uh, and I think moving forward, you'll see both of those guys in there in some combination, uh, you know. And uh, we thought we thought both of them did a, did a nice job for us. How do you, you size up Michigan? Well, they're you see any carryover from even two years ago? Yeah, it's been a long. <laughs> seems like it's been a long time ago. It seems like it's been more than two years ago. You know, a lot of games, a lot of things have happened between now and then. But um, you know, just watching the film, and uh, when you get to sit down and watch the film on Sunday, you see a. Um, you know, a very disruptive, fast, physical front. Um, I mean, like really some really uh, high level players across the board and a, and a good scheme, well coached. So it's a very good defense that we're gonna be playing against. It's, uh, uh, you know, obviously a good football team. And uh, I think that experience from, uh, you know, not many of our guys were there two years ago, but I think the experience from a couple weeks ago at Penn State, you know, just uh, the sim a similar feel, um, a similar type of, uh, you know, attacking defense, different uh, uh, for sure, structurally, but similar in 
kind of how they present themselves from a personnel standpoint, the talent, the, the twitch, the power. Uh, and I'm hoping that, that uh, I feel confident that, that what we went through a couple weeks ago will help us prepare for what we're going to see because this is an extremely aggressive, talented, physical uh, defense. They had the weekend off. Does that make you worry about them making, maybe making some changes defensively they might not do normally or do you worry about that? You know, I mean, like, that's one of those things that you could spend the whole, you go down a rabbit hole right. there of what ifs. And there is that, there is a level right. of that. There's always that speculation and well, how are they gonna see us and how are they gonna manipulate? and What are they gonna do differently? Uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, that's just, that's just part of the cat and mouse game of college football. And, and I would <coughs> fully expect what, what they are and who they've been for the first uh, part of the season that they're probably just fine tuning and working and tweaking certain things. But overall, I would expect it to be a similar feel with some nuances that we haven't seen at this point. When you talk about <coughs> that strip sack, like uh, you see those happen throughout weeks. Are, are there common threads there that you're seeing that like this is X what we need to clean up, or is it a combination of sure. up front or his internal clock? All that. Okay. Yeah, all that. There's no one you know <coughs> thing that you can pinpoint and say, well, it's just this, and let's get this fixed. There's a lot of things, you know, play call, read, you know, getting edged, having some urgency to get to, to react when things don't go well. Uh, it's it's all that. It's something, certainly something that we you know we continue to address and talk talk with them and coach them. It's my job to help um, you know get that through and put them in good positions. You know I didn't like the play call, and he does a lot. You know our guys get me right a lot. I mean that's not just me, but I think a lot. You know offensive coordinators across the country, guys. You know when the play doesn't exactly you know unfold the way you want, guys get you right. You know and uh, our guys do a lot of that, and that's one of those moments that you know I've got to do a better job of putting. You know, they had a, a pressure coming from the boundary, and so the front rocked to the field and pulls up Luke on a bootleg, you know. And as soon as you get pulled up on a bootleg, bad things happen. And, you know, and that's certainly what happened the other day. we got to get rid of the ball and, and try to avoid those situations. Coach, I know we've talked about it multiple times already this season, but it's a stat that really jumps out, and that's the, you know, red zone off, offense. So what would you point to, you know, to, to the success that you've had and, the, you know, the the – Percentage and the touchdown percentage and all that stuff. Well, I mean, our guy is just about players executing and me putting them in a good position. It's really, it really comes down to, and it's those two things. And you know, it starts with starts with the structure of what we're doing, uh, and then it then it really is about them executing at a high level. And our guys are doing that, uh, even though we did leave a couple opportunities. You know, uh, I thought our first red zone series was a real poor series when we got down there. We rushed through it, and I didn't I didn't like the way we executed the first series we got in the red zone the other day, and we kicked a field goal. I thought that was one of our poorest series we've had in a while, but then we bounced back and and really calmed down and executed pretty nicely. Uh, so I would just say it's it's not I'm not trying to undermine it or make it overly simplistic. Uh, obviously, that field area of the field is harder because the defense doesn't have as much field space to defend. You know, things get congested and get compacted, and you have to have a a really high level of execution. You got to be spot on your calls and. I think our guys are confident down right now, uh, down there right now, and that'll be a big key this week, you know, to continue that up. These guys are really, really good down in that area, and so we're gonna have to be really tightened up to be able to, when we, if we get opportunities, when we get opportunities down there to be able to punch it in. Are you seem to have a deepening wide receiver rotation. One of those guys got reps the other day. Hank and Colin have obviously produced. Like, what does that allow for you as a play caller? And what have you seen from those two? We got a lot of confidence in them. You know, I mean, like if you, you get your way out there. You, you've earned the right to be out there. And there's some guys, too, that we have confidence that weren't out there. There's guys that, that have earned the right in practice to get out there, but because of the way the game's unfolded, and you've got guys like Zakari and Pat on the perimeter that are so, you know, valuable to what we're doing, and they have really good gas tanks, you know. They play they can play a lot of plays and not get tapped out. Um, you know, sometimes there's not as oppor many opportunities, but, um, but yeah, we, I mean, it's, it, it's a really good feeling. We got a lot of confidence in, in, in those guys in that room. Uh, and then, uh, you know, like, like I said earlier, like Hank and Colin in particular, those are guys that are just extremely detailed and they play at a really fast rate on game day. Whatever, whatever they are genetically, they play to that, you know, on, on game day. And that's what you want from all your players. And they do that. And, and, and because they're so smart and savvy, you know, they've become really good weapons and a part of what we're trying to do offensively. Barry, Barry when you look at the, the touchdown in overtime to Pat, mm -hmm. uh, if Luke's being honest, he kind of gave the impression that, you know, Pat's not even his first read, maybe not even his second read. And so when you look at that on film, is that kind of next level stuff that Luke's doing that, that just kind of overtime happens? 
Well, I hope he's one of the first two reads. If he's, <laughs> I got to get with Luke on that one if he's not sure if that's his first two reads. But uh, that's a pretty simple read right there. That's he made pay, it pretty pay, clear pay. that it wasn't his first read. Yeah, he's not his first read. He's right about that, but he is a second. And uh, the safety is the first read, and the safety took the other crosser. And, uh, and then it made it pretty clear that it was one-on-one, -on -one and the throw and the way he pulled the pin on that throw and the ball placement and the catch that Pat made. I mean, that was a big-time throwing catch now. I mean, it wasn't, a, it wasn't an over-simplistic or over-exotic scheme. It's something that we've done during the year already a few times. People do it all across the country. Put two guys on crossing routes, pick one of them based on what happens in the back end. Luke picked the right one. Um, and uh, just through a dart uh, in the back of the end zone and the throwing spot, and Pat made a phenomenal play. So, um, you know, it just, sometimes those work out in a good way. And uh, I just felt like I was very confident in Luke's ability, our protection, and the two receivers that were sitting out there, that if they were man coverage, there was gonna be a guy that was gonna be one-on-one -on -one in the back of the end zone to, to strike them quick. And that's exactly how it unfolded. That was fun to watch. You talk about Hank. I mean, you can go back to the Penn State game. He had a couple of big catches mm -hmm. late in that game. Why, why is he able to get open like he is? And now he's kind of earned that. Savvy, throw. knowledge, understanding, spatial awareness, um, a knack for being open, um, knack for getting open. I'm trying to think of any other adjectives that would be, you know, just he's patient, uh, he's quick, uh, he's probably deceptively fast in a lot of ways. Um, and uh, just, just got a really good feel for the position, knows the offense very well, uh, very confident in what he's doing, and those are all good qualities uh, for a slot receiver. I'll go with Barry. Yep. Good. Thanks, Thanks,